Welcome. I welcome you all to this lecture in the course Introduction to Paninian Grammar. In this course, we have reached a stage now such that we can take a look back and see what we have learned so far and then also look at the plan ahead. In this lecture, we shall be doing precisely the same. Let us look back and review what we have studied so far about Paninian grammar in this course, which is of course an introductory course as the title also suggests. <clears throat> At the beginning, we studied the historical aspects related to the Paninian grammar. We studied the name of the text. Then we also studied names of various texts and authors who are part of this tradition of Paninian grammar. We started with Katyayana who wrote the Vartikas then Patanjali who wrote the great Mahabhashya, then Bhartrihari, Jayaditya Vamana and so on and so forth and then the great Bhattoji Dikshita and the Nagesha and so on and their lineage. We came to the current form of this tradition in which we described how the current tradition handles various issues related to the continuity of this tradition and how there is also some kind of enrichment happening to this tradition because of the touch with the current developments. We also took a brief note of the influence of this Paninian grammatical tradition on the modern branch of linguistics. When linguistics was in its infant stage, when the scholars came into contact with the Paninian grammatical tradition, how the scientific inquiry that we have studied so far as far as the process of speech production is concerned gave a huge impetus to them and the new branch of linguistics came into being. Then we studied the concept of the meta-language, an extremely important concept as far as the Paninian grammar is concerned and grammar in general is concerned. Meta-language is extremely important. Then we studied the features of the meta-language of the Paninian grammar. We studied three main features which make this meta language a unique one and those three features are namely the fundamental principle that the word form is included as part of the meaning conveyed by that word. This is the first feature of the meta language of Panini. The second feature was meaning of the cases. This was an additional feature altogether. The third one was the technique of forming the technical term called pratyahara, very, very valuable and very ex an extremely important tool device designed by Panini which helped him attain brevity. Then we studied the technique of forming the pratyahara. This technique allowed the Paninian grammar to attain brevity in grammatical description and also this brevity was not at the cost of anything but rather this brevity was 
in contrast with the exhaustiveness of the material that it covered. So, as greater the linguistic material covered by as brief a string is what seems to be the motto line that the Paninian grammar seems to have followed, seems to have achieved when it formed pratyaharas. This is the strength of the technique of pratyahara. In this process, we also studied the principles involved in the arrangements of sounds in the traditional inventory and they are rearranged in the first 14 sutras which allows the Paninian grammar to form the pratyahara. So what are the principles on the basis of which this rearrangement is made? This is what we studied. We also noted that there are 41 pratyaharas formed and used in the Paninian grammar. There are a couple of them more which are suggested by some commentators. And so, we saw that there are multiple pratyaharas, additional pratyaharas that can be formed if need arises. That is, if the linguistic usage is to be described using such pratyaharas, then those pratyaharas can also be generated. Right now, the Sanskrit usage demands the description which can be attained using these 41 pratyaharas. Then we moved towards studying the process of speech production as described in the Paninian grammar. We studied the source which described various stages. This source was Paniniya Shiksha and the verses which we repeated several times Atma Buddhya Sametyarthan Mano Yungte Vivakshaya Manah Kayagni Mahanti Saprera Yati Marutam Marutas Tu Rasicharan Mandram Janayati Swaram Sodirno Murdhyavihato Paktram Apadya Marutah Parnan Janayate. We noted that there are eight stages out of which the initial two stages correspond to the internal as well as cognitive stage. Atma Buddhya Samityarthan Mano Yungte Vivakshaya. And the later stages, Manakkaya Agnimahanti and so on, up to Varnanjanayate, they correspond to the physical or biological process involved in the process of speech production. And finally, the external speech is produced, which is the culmination of this process. So, the external most part is the speech produced and the internal most part is the cognitive stage. And we also said that there is a cause and effect relationship that is stated in between the most internal and the most external part of this process of speech production the cause and effect relationship. It is the internal part which is considered as the cause and the external part which is considered as the effect in this particular process. We also noted that this is true with regards to the process that a speaker undergoes. As far as the hearer is concerned, it will be the external part which will act as the cause of the communication and it will be the internal cognitive part which will be which will mark the end of this particular process. However, it is to be noted that when a speaker undergoes this process of speech production, he himself, he himself in most of the cases is also the hearer, the first ever hearer or the lone hearer if there is not anyone else around. So, he is also the validator. He also counter checks whether the external speech that is thus produced matches with the internal cognitive stages or not. And then if it is not, 
then he offers a rejoinder or he says I don't mean it or I meant this and so on and so forth. And if there isn't any mismatch, there isn't any reaction from the speaker as there is no need to give any reaction. So the point is that it is this internal cognitive process which plays an extremely important role which is what is given utmost importance by the Paninian grammatical tradition. And then there are several theories as well based on this particular fact which we shall study in the advanced level course of Paninian grammar. We then studied the properties of sounds which form the basis of grammatical activity in the Paninian grammar. The sounds which are thus produced by the process of speech production. We studied properties in the form of place of articulation, sthana. Then we studied the properties in the form of effort of articulation, prayatna. And we noted that there are two types of prayatnas which are noted by the Paninian grammatical tradition namely the abhyantara prayatna, the internal one and the bahya prayatna, the external one. Abhyantara referring to the effort of articulation that takes place inside the oral cavity and external refers to the effort of articulation that takes place outside the oral cavity. We then studied properties of each sound mentioned in the traditional sound inventory. We took each sound separately and noted down the place of articulation of that sound as well as the effort of articulation, both abhyantara as well as bahya. We also studied the purpose of abhyantara prayatna and also the bahya prayatna. The purpose of the abhyantara prayatna and the place of articulation is formation of the technical term called savarna which also helps Panini and Paninian grammar attain brevity in order to account for a great number of cases as far as the usage is concerned. Big data in brief manner that seems to be the motto line over here. So we studied these properties and the Bahya Prayatnas we noted were handy very useful as far as deciding the proximity between the substituent and the substitute in case the sutra states more than one substitutes. Then we also studied the relation of the sounds that are mentioned in the Pratyahara sutras, the 14 Pratyahara sutras and all the sounds that part that are part of the sound inventory, traditional sound inventory. So we noted this relation. We also studied the sutra in detail namely Anudit Savarnasya Cha Pratyaha and we noted that this sutra is called Savarna Grahaka and so on. After having studied the process of speech production, we moved on to study further another important concept which is compositionality. Then we studied the concept of compositionality in the Paninian grammar. We said that this concept functions at three levels in the Paninian grammar namely meaning or artha, word or shabda and accent or swara. We studied these three levels together with the components of these three levels and we also studied the examples. We also studied the contrast between indivisibility akhandatva and compositionality sakhandatva and concluded that both views are experienced by the speakers as well as the hearers as far as the process of communication involving speech is concerned. So, Sarvasatyavada as was stated 
by the Shabda Sutra, that is what we noted. This is what we have done so far. This also brings us to an important point, namely the purpose of grammar. What is the purpose of grammar according to the Paninian grammatical tradition? This is what we shall study in today's lecture, the purpose of grammar. We shall also study what is the purpose of studying grammar in what follows. So compositionality is the base on the basis of which the grammar functions. So compositionality forms the basic background for the grammar to function. As far as the Akhandatva is concerned, the grammar has nothing to do with it. One only has to count the number of sentences and one has to note down the meanings of those sentences, the corpus of sentences. But it is impossible to create such a corpus with exhaustiveness and therefore as a result of this limitation, we had to resort to the concept of compositionality. We studied the concept of Anvaya and Vetireka as propounded by the Vyakarana Mahabhashya where the meaning similarity and corresponding word similarity, they are matched together and the meaning dissimilarity with the corresponding dissimilarity as far as the word is concerned was matched together and it was stated that these are the constituents or these are the components of the sentence. And they were further confirmed by various complementary data and then we also found out that the grammar analyzes the indivisible units of meaning, word and accent and its components and then it stores them. The units of the indivisible units of meaning, word and accent namely the vakya are analyzed and its components in the form of padartha, word meaning, pada, word and padaswara, the word accent, they are all stored by the grammar. The grammar further analyzes these components in the form of padartha, pada and padaswara, the word meaning, the word and the word accent and it arrives at a stage which is non-derivable to a certain extent. It stops at these linguistic atoms as we call them and stores them as basic units to start the derivation process. These atoms we said are termed as Prakriti and Pratyaya. As far as the word is concerned, Prakrityartha and Pratyayartha as far as the meaning is concerned and Prakritiswara and Pratyayaswara as far as the accent is concerned. Then we noted that the grammar formulates rules which describe combinations of these basic units and also the combinations of the derived units in the form of the padas. So first the rules tell us the combinations of the prakriti and pratyaya as far as the word is concerned, prakrityartha and pratyayartha as far as the meaning is concerned and prakriti swara and pratyayaswara as far as the swara or accent is concerned. By joining the prakrityartha and pratyayartha, we derive the padartha. By joining the prakriti and pratyaya, we derive the pada. And by joining the prakriti swara and the pratyayaswara, we derive the padaswara. We have seen examples of this. And now, these units which are derived, they are further considered to be the units and some other units are constructed. So these derived units are considered valid units of speech by a community of speakers of that speech. Now other combinations of prakriti and pratyaya and the derived units 
which are not described by the rules of grammar are not considered valid units of speech by the same community of speakers of that speech. The prakriti and pratyaya bringing about the derivation of the pada and such padas bringing about the derivation of a sentence and such sentences get derived by various such units. So these combinations are valid units of speech considered valid by a community of speakers of that particular speech. And most importantly, the other combinations which are not described by the rules of grammar are not considered valid units of speech by the same community of speakers of that speech. So given that Ram goes to a village is the meaning which is to be expressed in the format that is shown in the form of an equation below in Sanskrit where you will have three words. The first word consisted of the components RP plus PT 1 to 3 where root R stands for root, P stands for Pratipadika, T stands for termination. So RP is the root Pratipadika and PT is the Pratipadika termination namely 1 to 3 plus RP plus PT 4 to 21 plus RV plus OS plus VT where V is Dhatu or a verbal root. OS is other suffix and VT is the verbal termination. So if this is the structure of a sentence that is to be used to express Ram goes to a village, we shall now fill in the slots. So RP can be Rama potentially, PT 1 to 3 could be Su, RP once again could be Grama. PT 4 to 21 could be um, RV could be gum, OS could be a uh, and VT could be T. So these are the basic components. These are our linguistic atoms and they express certain atoms in the, in the form of meanings. When these words are collected together to express the meanings, then by processing these items with the help of the rules, we get Ramaha as the Pada, Gramam as the Pada and Gachati as the Pada. When we join these Padas together, we get the sentence Ramo Gramam Gachati, which is considered as a valid statement. It is a valid sentence and also valid unit of the speech spoken by speakers of Sanskrit. This is how the grammar constructs the sentence and this is how the compositionality allows grammar to function. Similarly, if you look at the same meaning namely Ram goes to a village and if this is the meaning that is to be expressed, once again we will follow the same formula RP plus PT 1 to 3 plus RP plus PT 4 to 21 plus RV plus OS plus VT 1 to 18. Then if we have the following combinations, Rama plus Am, Grama plus Am, Gamma plus Ya plus T. Now these combinations will lead to the units namely Ramam, Gramam and Gamyati which will lead to the speech unit called sentence like Ramam Gramam Gamyati. If you have to express Ram goes to a village, if you collect these constituents or components and compose the higher units in the form of words and then the higher unit in the form of a sentence like Ramam Gramam Gamyati, then this is not considered as a valid statement. This is not a valid sentence at all. A Sanskrit speaker will tell you this is not a valid sentence at all. In order to express Ram goes to a village. So now 
the grammar provides us with the combinations which are considered to be valid combinations by the speakers of some script. So, for example, Rama plus Su, Grama plus Am and Gama Ati, this is a valid combination which then generates Ramaha, Gramam and Gachati, which then generates Ramo, Gramam, Gachati. This is a valid combination. But Rama and Am, Grama and Am, Gama, Ya and T is not a valid combination in order to express the meaning Ram goes to a village. This is not a valid combination because it is not stated by, it is not observed first of all by the grammar of Panini and it does not therefore state it in the form of rules. So, Ramam Gramam Gamyati is not a valid sentence as far as Paninian grammar is concerned. This is the purpose of grammar as far as Paninian grammar is concerned to tell us the combinations which are valid and the combinations which are not valid in order to express some meanings. And also as far as the meanings are concerned which combinations are valid, which meaning combinations are valid based on the principles of Yogyata and Akanksha and so on and so forth. Now, once this purpose is clear, the purpose of grammar which tells us the combinations that are valid, we shall now study the sutras which are part of Paninian grammar. These sutras will state which combinations of linguistic atoms, word atoms are valid and which are invalid to express which particular meanings with which accent features in all these three levels. The sutras of Paninian grammar are devoted to this particular cause. This is the main purpose of the sutras in the Paninian grammar to explain these combinations, which combinations are valid as far as meanings are concerned, word is concerned and the accent is concerned. Now let us briefly study the purpose of the study of grammar as stated by the Paninian grammatical tradition. The purpose of the study of grammar is to know which are the valid combinations. Primary purpose of the study of Paninian grammar is to get the knowledge of valid combinations of linguistic atoms which constitute units of speech at different levels. Artha, Shabda and Swara, which meanings can be combined as valid in Sanskrit Arthakasha and which words can be combined to express these meanings namely the Shabdakasha and which accents can be combined as features of these words. Knowledge of these is what is the purpose of studying grammar to gain knowledge of these. Also to gain the knowledge of the technique of combining compositionality as well as indivisibility is also the purpose of grammar. The current tradition states that the main purpose of the study of grammar is to get the knowledge of the division of the speech into the atoms called prakriti and pratyaya to the knowledge of the technique of conversion of the compositionality into indivisibility prakriti pratyaya vibhaga nishchaya jnana purvaka akhandatva jnanam that is the second one I repeat the knowledge of the technique of conversion of the compositionality into indivisibility. Prakriti, Pratyaya, Vibhaga, this is compositionality. Nishchaya, the knowledge, Jnana, Purvaka, Akhandatva Jnanam, knowledge of indivisibility. And the third one is the speech utterance with this knowledge. Tat Purvakam Ucharananja. So the knowledge of the conversion and the indivisibility and the ucharana uttering the speech with this particular knowledge in hand. This seems to be the primary purpose of 
the grammar as far as the current Paninian grammatical tradition is concerned. What is the next plan of action that we are going to undertake? Now we are going to study the sutras, various types of sutras and their examples. So first of all we shall study what is a sutra, what are the types of sutras because each sutra might be assigned some different function. What is the reasoning behind classifying sutra in this particular way? Then we shall study how to make the meaning of the sutra. Partly we have studied this when we studied the sutras defining it saudhnya. But we shall revisit this. What is the speech form generated by the sutra? What are the examples which are part of the linguistic usage? Which is the speech form that is not generated by the sutra? And how it is not generated? How it is avoided by adding specific wordings in the sutra? And then we shall also study the derivation process which is supported by the sutras. Various sutras account for various stages as far as the derivation is concerned. We shall study this aspect in detail from here on. This we shall do from the next lecture onwards. But before closing this lecture, let us follow our practice and recite the Mangala Charana from one of the celebrated texts in the Paninian grammatical tradition. This is Laghu Shabdendu Shekhara composed by Nagesha Bhatta, a commentary on the Vayakarana Siddhanta Kaumudi. And the Mangala Charanas are two verses I have selected. They are Patanjala Mahabhashye Krita Bhuri Parishramaha Shiva Bhatta Sutodhi Man Sati Devyastu Garbhajah Natva Fanisham Nageshas Tanutair Thap Prakashakam Mano Ramo Mardha Deham Laghu Shabdendu Shekharam I repeat Patanjala Mahabhashye Krita Bhuri Parishramaha Shiva Bhatta Sutodhi Man Sati Devyastu Garbhajah Natva Fanisham Nageshas Tanutertap Prakashakam Mano Ramo Mardha Deham Laghu Shabdendu Shekharam And the five sutras of today, they are taken from 6.1, the 6th chapter, 1st sub-chapter, 6th Adhyaya, 1st Pada and they are Ekacho Dve Prathamasya, Ajadair Dvitiyasya, Nandras Sanyoga Dayaha, Purvo Bhyasaha, Ubhe Abhyastam. I repeat, Ekacho Dve Prathamasya, Ajadair Dvitiyasya, Nandras Sanyoga Dayaha, Purvo Bhyasaha, and Ubhe Abhyastam. Thank you for your attention.